Hello again everybody and welcome back to the test flight preview series in the DCS MiG-21 fish bed. And I had intended to stop this series of 10 videos. My original intent was to release one every two to three days until release the final version of the software. But as of this recording, no release date announcement has been made. So I'm just going to press on with this and wait to do the tutorials once the finished version of the software comes out. A date to be determined as of this recording at least. And uh, a lot of time has passed, actually, since I recorded the 10th video, and now it, uh, the first 10 videos were about day 1 and 2 of me having the software. This is about, it's been about 3 or 4 weeks, I think, since that uh, time is kind of escaping on me. I have no idea how long it's been exactly, but it's been weeks. So, uh, I'm just going to pick this up at uh, an obvious uh, pickup location. And as of now, I've done everything that I would need to do to get ready to fly a mission with the exception of figure out how to navigate in the aircraft. And it's going to be a combination of visual and radio navigation. I don't have a built-in inertial navigation or you know any fancy GPS system helping me along. I've got to just use the map and use whatever radio sources that I have on the ground to help me when it comes to finding the turret. So, what I've got set up is a cross-country mission going from Sanaki Kolki Airfield to Krasnodar Airfield up in Russia. And the reason I'm making the change is that I've been flying all these missions in the On the Range series and everything else right down there from Snaki Kolki, and I just need a new place to fly around just so I can learn some new terrain. And also I found on Google Earth an actual Russian bombing range up there around Krasnodor that I'll, uh, I'll be sure to, well, yeah, I've got to do a separate video on that. It was kind of a neat process when it came to getting on Google Earth and just kind of deducing, okay, where would I be if I were a Russian bombing range? And yeah, lo and behold, there it was, so it's kind of a neat story, a little bit of detective work that I'll be sure to show in a video later on. But okay, let me go ahead and get into this mission. And it's, uh, this one, new range. And it's just going to be a cross country mission. They pull up the mission planner. Flying from Sanaki Kolki along the coast, past Tsukimi Babushara to Soki Adler. I'll do a, maybe do a touch and go here, testing out the ILS system. Then I'll turn, turn due north up over these little hills to Makop, and from Makop up to Krasnodar uh, Pashkovsky airfield by the uh, city of Krasnodar. So this is going to be my new temporary base of operations is the uh, Krasnodar airfield, which I remember, you know, back in the days of the original lock-on and I, I believe actually Black Shark, there were a lot of missions to flew out of here and do some research. Krasnodar was like one of the SU-25, like, Flying Academy, that's where you went to learn how to fly, I think it was uh, Sukhoi 25s, it might have been some other aircraft, but it was a big pilot training center at one point. So it uh, makes sense as a place to fly out of, and here's the location of the bombing range up here by the town of, uh, oh, what is the town? Uh, uh, Novoliksovskaya, sure. So, yeah, I'll, I'll show that at some point, but yeah, just a cross-country flight, and what I'm going to be doing is using the nav aids along the way. And I'm going to have nav aids at the major military airfields. And I also have these NDBs, radio beacons on the ground that I'll be able to tune to. And have the aircraft give me a direction to fly towards these beacons. So, I have a single fuel tank, centerline fuel tank, 800, 800 liters on my centerline station. It's going to be a kind of a long flight. Um, but that should give me plenty of fuel to get up there and maybe fly a pattern a time or two up there around the... Uh, the Krasnodor airfield. So with that, let me go ahead and get into the air and just see where this takes us. Okay, and picking up on the ground one final time at Sanaki Kolki airfield. And my goodness, I've done a lot of flying out here and uh, and uh, Kutasi and uh, just uh, Batumi, all this entire area. It'll be good to get some new terrain under me for a change. Okay, and like I said before, it's been, uh, let me see, the first 10 videos were about day one through one and two of me having this, and haven't really done a whole lot of flying since, believe it or not. I know I post videos like every day, or at least every other day when I can do it, but I don't really fly that much. You probably, over the last two years, seen all the flying, actually, that I've done in DCS. So, I might be a little bit shaky here, but I have had a chance to go over the manual quite a bit and read it uh, cover to cover, uh, several different versions of it actually, and get a little bit more of a feel for the systems. Now what we're going to be using this time around is the ARC system, and that's controlled by this panel over here. I have a series of push buttons labeled 
uh, 1 through 9, and that's going to enable me to dial in those NDBs, those radio beacons on the ground that is going to give me a bearing to fly in order to overfly those locations. So let me pull up my kneeboard and have a look at what I'm going to be working with here. Okay, so here are the ARC sectors and channels. Now, I have a sector selector knob over here set to sector 2, uh, 2 slash 1. So that's going to be the area that I'm going to. Here's Kresnador, I've got uh, Makop, and all the beacons that are out there. So eventually I'm going to be dialing into uh, beacon number 8. But for now, let me see, I'm at uh, Tsukimi, or I'm actually at, uh, yeah, yeah, so, uh, where am I? I've already forgotten. I'm, I'm where I am. It's down here, this place. So I'm going to start out on sector 3 slash 1, and I want beacon number 3. So let me go to 3, 1, and then beacon number 3, and that's going to give me that beacon up here around um, uh, whatever the town is. It's the same one that I used actually uh, during the F-86 and the UH-1 missions up here uh, just by that reservoir. Okay, now, that'll be my first leg in the journey. So from there, I'm going to go up the coast, past Tsukimi, or past uh, Babushara, up to Sochi Adler, then turn north. That'll be from right here, turning north to beacon number eight. That'll be my Makop. Then out to uh, Kresnador. Okay, so that's the first system that I'm going to be using. And these are the beacons, and that's how you, you select them. Now, I also have a system. It's... Uh, kind of like the TechAnt system, it is the, uh, let me see, RSBN, and that's a, an abbreviation, I believe it's a translation of a Russian abbreviation, but yeah, RSBN system is my, I think of it as a TechAnt system, where I have a transmitter out there, uh, all these are by the major military airfields in the area, and they're going to give me a uh, distance and a bearing to the station. I can also select a radial that I would like to fly, so if I want to fly to and from the station from a certain heading, or to or from a certain heading, I can dial that in and it will allow me to guide on a specific radial for each of the stations. And here's a list of the RSPN channels. And like I said, they are set up to, uh, for the major military airfields, I'm at Sanaki Koki, so channel 14 is what I'll be initially uh, flying off of. So let me get this one set up to 14. Okay, so that's the RSPN. And now I have the PRMG, another Russian abbreviation. So this is like the ILS. It uses the same channel as the uh, navigation system. But now I have both of them set to 14. And now I'm going to get uh, bearing and range information to this airfield. I'm also going to get ILS guidance uh, to uh, both of the runways at this airfield. Okay, so that is set up for when I get into the air. That's my initial setup. So what I want to do now is just go ahead and get things started and do some cross-country flying. So I am at Sanaki Koki. I need to go to radio channel 16. Okay, and I need to go to the radio uh, position on the main dial. And it has two positions, radio, and it's labeled as compass. But really what this is, is it's the top position is radio, the bottom position is intercom that allows you to interface with the ground crew. Okay, so that's all set. Now I just need to get everything up and running. I'm not going to use the checklist like I did last time. I'm, uh, I am started doing the, the more detailed procedures. I fired it up and started to record a video doing that earlier. But you might have heard just maybe about 30, 40 seconds ago, you heard that hiss. And uh, you probably you saw it in another video that I did where I get to a certain point and then everything just sort of resets after four minutes. And that's a feature that is going to change thank goodness, in the release version, and allow me to run through a more detailed startup and a more detailed uh, systems checkout prior to takeoff. A lot of it would have actually been done by the crew chief before you step out of the aircraft, or, you know, you could go out there and, you know, uh, called cocking or hot cocking the aircraft, where you position everything, do, you know, run up the engine, check all your systems, and then shut everything back down so that all you have to do is hop into the aircraft and take off which is really, you know, kind of how I'm taking this right now. So now all I have to do is fire up the engines and get into the air because everything else was already set up before. What I really want to do is go through the process of setting everything up, which um, takes some time, 
And as of right now, everything sort of resets before I can get through it all. So I'm going to have to wait till the release version to show all that. It is a very interesting process. And you do learn a lot about the systems doing that, which is why I like to do it. But for now, what I'm going to do is just get this thing up and running. So I'm going to flip on my inverter switches, go battery and DC gen on. Uh, let me go fuel pumps on. Okay, radio switch and flight recorder on. Let me call for uh, startup, ETC. Uh, Kolke, request startup, please. And while you're responding, go APU and fire extinguisher on. Okay, clear for startup. Win 340, it's 6, okay? And it says engine APU. It's not your traditional, it's not like the APU in the A10. I, I read about this last night. It's more of a... I'd have to look and see exactly what that thing does, but it's not like an APU APU. I'll get back to that later, but uh, let's see here. Normal start. Let me go ahead and go to the start position. And let me pull first my throttle, of course, out of the cutoff position and set that up. Now start. And the start cycle commences. Okay, so I'm going to let that run this course. I'll go ahead and uh, depress. That's like my master caution light. I'll wait till it's done, tell me what it's doing, and then I'll depress that. Okay, so I just got my engines coming up. Uh, low and high pressure, or yeah, high pressure compressors stages are coming up. Okay, there's an oil light out, so I've got oil pressure coming up. Okay, EGT should start to come off the peg here momentarily, and I've got good hydraulic pressures already on both systems. And okay, now master caution off. Okay, I'm looking for 35 and 50 on my dials. Okay, well, I'm there. Let me go ahead and uh, check pressures. Okay, I've got good uh, pressure for my brakes. Okay, brakes engage. Okay, and good pressure there. That was just a check. Okay, if I go left pedal, my right indicator goes down to zero. Uh, right pedal, left indicator goes down to zero. So it's just sort of like differential braking. Uh, one... Uh, depression of one pedal relieves the pressure at the brake for the opposite uh, main wheel so that's how that works okay now let me go ahead and get the rest of my systems up and running so let me go ahead and go AC gen on let me go gyro one and two on okay I already got all these I'll leave my console lights off and let me just go across this panel here and get all my systems off nose cone hydraulic pump or pump of some kind I know I read about this Emergency hydraulic pump, okay, yep. Auto, uh, AP pitch, autopilot, FDS, gyro, RSBN, radio altimeter, ARC. So that's going to get all the navigation stuff and all the just miscellaneous systems up and running. I have no stores other than my center line fuel tank, which I can tell is there because I have the center fuel tank, green light illuminated. So I don't need to configure anything on my armament switches. I'll just leave everything there to off. But I will go on to the on position on my IFF, one of my uh, IFF systems. Okay, uh, radio is all set. I've got this in position three, so I should have good guidance on my ARC. RWR, get the rest of my IFF up and running, and that's good to go. Radar, I'll go ahead and go to the center position. That'll get the radar warming up. I'll just keep coming around here. Okay, PETO, I need to go to the main position on that. I'll go ahead and switch that on over. Okay, everything else is looking as it should. Okay, this stuff I'll leave as is. Let me go ahead and calibrate. Okay, so that is calibrated. And that should be a lot uh, pointing me in the right heading. I should have made note of that before I got on the ground here. I'm facing more or less. Well, yeah, I'm facing in that direction. So yeah, that's that's going to be good. I doubt if there's a failure built in, so it's going to be out of calibration once you do calibrate. Okay, ADI looks good, and okay, center, nav position. We'll see this switch used as we get into the navigation as well. Okay, the rest of the gun sight switches I'll leave off. Okay, nothing up here is required for this mission. Okay, gear, good green lights on my gear indications. Okay, I did uh, find reading the manual that I was only using one stage of my afterburner. If I want to use the second stage, I need to go emergency afterburner on. I think the emergency portion of that through me. That's just a two-stage afterburner, and to get the second stage, 
or I guess the like the full afterburner, you have to put the switch to the on position. Okay, so still coming around. Okay, I'm going to be using this system, which is sort of like an autopilot. It's like a stability and uh, augmentation system. SAU, I think, is the is either the Russian acronym or maybe the uh, Russian acronym translated. But I'll be using this uh, during the during the mission, showing some of the features. Taxi light, landing light. I haven't used this so far. I'll think about using that on this mission. Okay, and the rest of it. Okay, everything is good to go here. I'll come across. Okay, good, good, good. I'll go to auto on my cockpit. Um, like environment uh, switch. It's like a uh, cockpit air uh, switch. Okay, the rest of it is good. I could, if I wanted to, I could manually control the position of my nose cone and the exhaust nozzle, but uh, I'll leave that alone. And that's my timer telling me that it's about time to wrap this one up and press on with the second uh, part of the video. But, um, yeah, I, I feel like at this point I've got a much better grasp of the systems, and I don't know, I might even just kind of do away or not fly as long a real test flight series as I had planned, because, I mean, I think I've got everything more or less figured out. I just need to put it up there, put it into the air, and put everything into practice real quick. I'll continue coming around the cockpit real quick, just verifying everything as, as I want it, then I'll press on with part two. Okay, so I have this switch, which is going to put this indicator into either the RSVN or the ARC mode. So depending on what navigation system I want to be displayed down here, I have this two position toggle switch which will switch it between the two. I'll get to that once I'm airborne. Okay, the rest of it is just environmental and suit pressure controls. So, okay, that's good enough for now. There's so much depth here and so much I could I could spend I could spend an hour just going around the cockpit. And, well, if you know my videos, you know I'm not kidding. So let me go ahead and cut this one here before I do spend an hour on this. And I'll see you in part two where we get into the air and start to navigate a little bit. So thanks again. I'll be right back.